Hello YouTube, RJ. Hey, got something out of the mailbag if you watched my mailbag video previously. It's the RST FG 100 thermometer. It's one of those AliExpress cheap buys I did, and I thought we'd take a look at it. What this is, first of all, it's $10. It was very inexpensive. Ooh, interesting. Some sensors with it. It's a soldering iron calibration meter. It was really cheap, not something I can live, you know, couldn't live without. But for ten dollars, I thought it would be neat to be able to check your soldering irons and, you know, see how accurate they are and such. I don't know a lot about it. I thought for ten bucks we'd give it a shot, see what it, what we think. So, looks like I need a nine volt battery, which is no problem because we got one right here. The sensors looks like you put the sensors on here scan through confuse it says Celsius type Fahrenheit type I hope this isn't two different types hope it does both I didn't see when I ordered it where it was different okay it's resolution is one degree either Celsius or Fahrenheit 0 to 700 degrees C 32 to 1300 Fahrenheit plus or minus 3 C plus or minus 6 F it's got a low battery alarm, one nine volt battery, temperature sensor 199212. That's what I have. Can only be used to measure temperatures below 500 degrees C. That's not a problem. Don't think I'm going to be soldering at almost 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit anytime soon. Okay, when the B emblem shows up, you place the battery. The alarm indicates the sensor is burnt out. You need to replace it. Be careful. Don't burn yourself, it says. Open the battery cover and insert the battery. Okay, let's get this rascal open and see what we think, how it works. Got some kind of, I don't know what that is. Open the battery cover for the battery. Okay, open the battery cover. I try to remember to do things on camera. I forget sometimes. Okay, let's get our battery hooked up. There we go. Okay, we did that part. Attach the sensor. Okay, well, we got to get a sensor out. Tiny little things. Let's see if we can get one of them out. You've got red and... Uh, that's, that's all of them are got a red or a blue. Oh, I see. Red and blue. I was thinking red... Blue might be whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit, but no, it's the terminals and which one hooks where. This I don't know. If you look at the pictures of it, it looks like it's got this on this pin. So I'm thinking it was supposed to be there. I don't know why, but press the push button to move the slide pin down to the terminal side. Okay, so that moves that. Okay. You put the red on this side. You put the blue on this side. You push this button, drop this over it, and pull it. And apparently that's, that's her. Okay. It says that you wet it with solder before you put it on there conduct so we'll get we'll get set up to test this thing all right let's uh, get this thing warming up luckily it does not as we know take very long and it's warming up I got it set to 360c had an interesting question about 360c one of the commenters questioned whether that was a little hot to be soldering at and I had to answer back and explain that no it's really not um, a lot of opinions on solder temperature. You can go online and get everything from ridiculously cold to probably ridiculously hot. If you check, for example, I gave them an example of Adafruit. Adafruit has a soldering tutorial on and they tell people learning to solder to turn their irons to 370C. I'm using 360. That works for me well. 360 is not super hot. Here's the trick. The two things people worry about is they worry about oxidizing their tip. And, and there's no doubt 
that higher temperatures oxidize the tip quicker. There, there's absolutely no doubt about that, okay? At the same time, it's not a problem as long as you keep things clean. And you turn it off when you're done, and you just don't leave your iron sitting that. You turn your temperature sleep settings to where they cool down to a reasonable temperature before too long if you're not using the iron, and you won't have that issue. Tips will last a long time. They do last a long time for me. If you're buying quality tips, if you're buying ultra cheap Chinese tips, they don't last for anybody any period of time. They literally, they start going away. You'll have, they'll, they'll become like a shark tooth on the end of them where you're soldering. And you have, they just literally go away. They're terrible. If you're soldering at lower temperatures, let's say you're soldering at 310 degrees C or anything too cool. Maybe you're soldering at, there's people that solder under 300 degrees C. The other concern is damaging components. And let me tell you, infinitely more people damage components because of cold soldering irons than hot soldering irons. In my experience, bear in mind, I'm going to be 59 here shortly. And the fact of the matter is I've been soldering since I was about nine. So about 50 years I've been soldering. That doesn't seem real. Nine-year-olds don't solder, but I did. I was into electronics at a very, very young age. If you take into consideration 50 years, I have probably experienced enough time to kind of get a feel for things. And here's what I can tell you. In that time, I have seen so many parts be destroyed by people trying to solder at a low temperature. Because when they go to solder, they're on the part for so long, it takes... It's not the temperature alone that damages it apart. It's how long you stay on it. There's a time it takes to flow heat up into the terminal leg of a component and into the die, through the bonding wires, into the die, and damage the part. If your iron's hot enough and you put on and you start on a real, you know, really quick, you're in there, you're not on there more than say a second or so, and you get off, even though you were soldering at a higher temperature, you did less, you put less thermal temperature onto the parts that you have to be concerned about because... It didn't have time to conduct in. If you go on with a low temperature, any temperature you solder at is hot enough to damage a component. If you can solder at the temperature, it's too hot for the component. So don't think about, if I go hot, it'll be too hot and it'll damage it. Going too hot, any of those temperatures will damage it. The only thing we can control, we're always going to be too hot for the part. We're always going to be too hot where we can damage it. Most parts don't like more than about 125 degrees C. And you're not soldering at 125 degrees C, I promise you. So because of that, any temperature you solder at will damage your part. The only control you have is how long you are on that part at that temperature. The longer you're on, the closer to that temperature you're soldering at, the part, the, the interior die of the part will get. So if you turn your temperature up a little higher and you're on there very short, you do a lot less damage. So sitting there for 15 seconds trying to get a TO220 transistor soldered down on a copper grounding pad, you're going to get inside that transistor a lot hotter than hitting it with 360 degrees for like a second or so. That's a little spill on soldering and temperature. Don't be afraid to turn your iron up to a reasonable temperature. Give it a try and find out. Your soldering is going to go better. You'll have less cold joints. Your joints will be more reliable. And you won't damage as many parts. If you go on there at that temperature, if you're doing 360 like me, you go on a part and you're sitting there and you're sitting there and sitting there. After two or three seconds, you should be getting off the part. Something's not right. You need to be figuring out what's not right, why this isn't working, and what do I need to do to resolve it. Don't sit there and cook your parts. Okay, with that out of the way, let's turn this thing on. It says make sure it reads about room temperature. 24.8C is about room temperature. I assume I got the C version, which is good. So we're going to do just as it said. We're going to clean this tip, wet it with a little solder. Oh, I let it go to sleep. I'm sorry. Give it a minute. Okay, wet it with a little solder. I don't think they meant that much, but let's touch it down here and see what we get. Dude, look at that. <laughs> Uh, I'd say with no me doing nothing with this iron out of the box, this thing is darn accurate. I mean, I'm, I'm, it claims 360. Let me get up where we can see the temperature. It says 360. And we'll make sure you can read the meter. Let's see where can I get it where it might show up better. Being an LCD. And I'm going to go back on it. She jumps to 359, 360, 361, 2, 3. Let's see where it stabilizes out. 363. 
three, six, three. Now it's going to lock at the max for me. So this iron is set for 360 degrees C. It's truly putting out 363 degrees C. I would say within the accuracy of, of the two items, I'd, I'd say dead on. Couldn't be, couldn't be happier with that. So let's go ahead and let's turn this iron off. I'm going to clean it first. Clean the tip. Put a little solder on it. Unplug it. Put the top. And we'll put it away. Okay, so I've moved all that out of the way. I pulled out my regular soldering station. Fired it up with the normal 360 degrees C. Let it warm up and stabilize out for a couple minutes just to make sure she's stable. And so let's uh, let's see how it shows, what it shows. Get just a tiny little bit of solder on there like it tells you to. Let's see what we get. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Wow. Stabilize that a little. Oh yeah, my soldering station is a little on the hot side. It's reading 360 and it's running close to 390. So <clears throat> you guys that were thinking I was soldering too hot at 360, I got news for I was soldering a lot hotter than that. So let me see if we can calibrate this. Let's see, what, it, what did I side? 300, about 390. So let me do the calibration. Um, what you do is on the 8786D, the old style, you push the up and down temperature buttons on the solder station side and hold them for a couple seconds. And when you do that, what you get is three LEDs or three decimal points telling you that you're in calibration mode. Now use the up and down arrows to set it to what it actually is. So we, we're going to tell it 390 to start with. We're going to tell it it's 390. Then you push the two buttons together again. It'll come out and it'll start adjusting its temperature from where you just told it it is down to where you had it set. So it's cooling down. Help her out a little. And I'm going to put a little solder. I think I'm on. I'm going to give her just, let's give her 30 seconds to kind of stabilize. They don't adjust as quick as these new modern soldering guns. They don't stabilize out as well as these new units like this uh, with the heating element in the tip. Not as much mass. They change temperature much quicker. So let's let it stabilize out, 360. And I would say it's had time to do that. So let's clean the tip, a little bit of solder. Let's see what we get this time. Mm, maybe still a little high. Uh, stabilizing out ain't bad. You can actually see it's still working on stabilizing. I'm going to say that's close enough. That works for me. So see that? <laughs> this thing was handy to me. I had no idea my iron was that much difference temperature. So it's nice to have a way to do that, to calibrate. Some of, some of the people who watch my channel may find that this is a handy tool. And for 10 bucks, it's not a lot of money. Nowadays, 10 bucks doesn't buy much. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Hopefully it'll be helpful to you. If you like the content, you enjoy what I do, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. I need all the subscriptions I can get to help me out, guys. Hard to get people to watch your videos if YouTube doesn't put it out in front of them. So if you don't have many subscribers, YouTube's algorithm does not put your video in front of very many people. It's hard to grow a channel. So you can help me out greatly and show that you appreciate me doing these videos and content for you by just hitting that subscribe button. Likes are also are a very big help. And if you don't want to miss anything, hit the notify button. That'll make sure you see every video I make. It'll come up and show you that I've made a new video. Hope to catch you in my next video.